Hello Nitro fans, Racing393, and here we are for part seven of my Kyosho um, Turbo 4x4 rebuild. Um, another short video, um, had a few bits and pieces to do on other cars, so this one's been left to the side for the time being, but for today's video, we're just gonna go over uh, the next stage. Um, there's not much to go over, I'll be honest with you. However, I uh, had some advice from someone that was must be watching the video, I guess, and it, it's make, it makes sense. I mean, I was thinking that anyway. I haven't done the advice that was I was uh, recommended, not, not yet, uh, but I did act on that through with you in a bit. So just to recap, a 0.21 Asman motor was put in, 3.5, I think it is, I think, I think it's a 3.5. I've since purchased other Asman motors, uh, 0.28, this is a 0.21. But yeah, it shouldn't be much different. You know, this is an untested engine as well. You know, the, the problem is when you buy secondhand nitro engines, you never know the full history. You know, I've got nitro engines that don't seem to have much compression, yet they work quite well, but I do tend to keep my nitros in reasonably good condition. I do strip them down. Um, the only things I don't replace are things like pistons and sleeves. I haven't got to that stage yet, or even comrods. Got bearings and seals and nuts and bolts and make sure they're clean. They should work. They're a very simple mechanism, a two-stroke um, or even a, a diesel, a two-stroke diesel. Um, that's pretty much what nitro is. But anyway, onwards and upwards. So next thing to do on this, this car is I, I'm going to show you. I did secure some fuel pickup pipe in the fuel tank, uh, but it is at a slight angle. Uh, which I'll show you, um, and I'll I'm going to go through what I'm going to what I plan to do, um, and what I and and how I'm going to get around that. So let me just uh, let me remove uh, the shell for a minute. So if you don't already know, this fuel tank is an original fuel tank. It was missing uh, a rubber grommet and the pickup pipe that came with the kit was broken. So much deliberation. I'm pretty sure I could probably fit another retrospect, another tank in there. I can't see that being a massive issue. But what I decided to do is that the original hole in the tank, well, that's still there. I purchased another fuel tank only because it had some grommets. It was from a Kyosho. Now the grommets that went in the rubber sort of seal perhaps weren't the same size. However, a bit of brass pipe put in there, um, which had a, a bend in it, which I put in it. So it goes down to sort of the bottom of the fuel tank, but it is at an angle and quite clearly that as it's at an angle, the bottom of that is gonna probably not seal. I can put some more seam in it to try it out. Uh, of, clearly it needs to be straight, that was what the recommendation was, and with a, a 45 degree bend in the pipe. Now since that I have purchased a pipe bender here, which will be ideal for if I have to, well I'm probably going to have to, but for now, if I've got to upgrade that to a, a better fitting tube, then, then so be it, I mean I will do that. But just for now, what we're going to do today is we're going to put some fuel pipe on there, put it onto the car. Well, actually, I'm going to put it onto the tank. We're then going to block the hole and just give it a little bit of a pressure blow and just to see if it will hold a bit of pressure. I can put some more sealant underneath, under there. Um, for now, it's a bit of a, a bit of a bodge effort, but. I do, I can uh, build, uh, bend another pipe to go in. I mean, that's really difficult to put in anyway. It's, it's quite tough. 
you can almost split the rubber. I've got another two rubbers that came with another fuel tank, which I can use. Um, if I knew the size and you was familiar with sizes and things, you could drill it, drill it out even more and fit a different rubber grommet that you know would fit. But you know, you start messing around. I mean, it should really, I've seen it on other tanks where the, in, the sort of the pickups here, so it's, it goes straight down into the bottom of the tank, which makes sense. Um, but this is the design that we're faced with. Yes, and it is at an angle. The problem is I can fully understand that should be coming out of the tank straight, which it, it isn't. Anyway, this is sort of the um, bit of a test bed. So we're gonna put some clear tube from there to the pickup of the carb. So we'll just route it around somehow. But before I do that, I'm gonna put some on the end there and give a bit of a, an, an R, what they call an RC blow job. And we're just gonna see how much pressure is held in the tank. So let me, uh, let me just sort that out. Some pretty standard fuel hose. Um, I don't need it that long. It's obviously gotta be enough so it doesn't kink anywhere. So I'll do it at least that length. Idea to keep the fuel from the tank to the carb clear um, so that you can see the fuel running up into the carb. And then what I tend to do is from the tank to the exhaust, uh, I tend to run any color to be honest, because that's irrelevant. It doesn't that doesn't really matter. Now I've got a feeling I might have take the fuel tank off because that's going to be a bit awkward. There's that one. There's the fuel tank. And there's, you know, you can see, I'll show you, look, it's got, it is, uh, it's, it is going to probably leak there unless I put some more sealer on it for now. It shouldn't move. I said it probably is moving. But anyway, I'm going to try and fit that onto there without, I'm going to have to move it off camera for a minute without pushing it through and breaking that seal. That's always, that's going to be a bit of a challenge. So it is on there. It's not on fully. I don't need to, I might even put a cable tie around it, but it does flex. So it is, it is a pretty temporary addition. I mean, We'll see. So I'm gonna I'm gonna blow down the end, hold and hold that over. It is leaking from somewhere. Not quite sure where though. So it does leak. Now I'm left with a little bit of a dilemma here. I could use the pipe bender and make another one, but it's I didn't want this video to be a repeat. Um, I'm just trying to determine where it's coming from. I might put some more sealer on there and then just fit it into the car for now. I, you know it's probably going to end up um, having to take this off to make the car so it starts. I get that. I'm just trying to do a bodge job basically, but we'll see. Hang on, let me just double check again. For now, I'm just gonna try and do some more seal around there. It's very minimal. Some of it's actually come probably out the lid. It has got a seal on the lid, but it, you don't know, it just might be it might, it could probably do with another type of seal. Um, I'm not sure what I can use. I'll have to have a look. Maybe something else on the lid, maybe. I'm not saying that what I've done is, is perfect body stretch. So let me just put some more seal on there and I will, I will come back. So with the sealer on there, yeah, I'm going to put another cable tie on the, tube i'm just I don't, it's, I, I don't think it's it's not but it isn't it's not leaking from that bit but uh 
That's one thing I've got to do on my Traxxas, because that's fl flowing, throwing, not flowing, throwing fuel out. Um, and I don't know what to do to stop it. So let's get this um, back on the chassis. Um, I know you're probably going out there, do it properly. Yes, I know, I'm just, I'm, I'm basically don't wanna get myself mucky at the moment because uh, of course there's other things to concern myself about like, does the motor actually work? You know, so, and maybe it won't work if the fuel tank's not sealed, but anyway, we'll, uh, we'll, cross, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Incidentally, does the, uh, I won't say the word, but the camera I'm using, which is a Hero 9, does anybody else use that? As in, it turns itself off for no reason whatsoever other than to be annoying. I could run it round there like that, that's gonna be near. Like that might be a bit, I mean I can move where the carbs actually, I might have to move the outlet because it's sort of facing the wrong way. I mean it could do with facing, so it goes on like, like that. Although that might not be the right size. Uh, okay, plan, plan bodge. So it's on there now, I moved it. I uh, basically just undone it with some pliers. It's not very tight. I did have a, Somewhere I've got a tool that fits that, but I, I can't remember exactly where it is. I've got some other tubing. Tube. Tube. Here, got some just blue exhaust tube. And this bit here will go, it goes from the tank is there depends where you have it I don't need it to be super long that goes on to the exhaust so at the moment we're now sort of plump I mean I suppose to be honest with you that needs just a little bit longer but it's fine as far as where I put it it can you know it's only an airway it doesn't matter I can clip it so it's clipped down. Clearly, that if another exhaust depends where the uh, you know the, the nipple bit is, if it's on top like it usually is, we'll reroute it there. Um, okay, so this will um, conclude. As far as the next part of the video, more things need to be purchased. We're still unsure, obviously, about the fuel tank. I don't. As it is a slight leak, I personally don't think it will work, but it might it might just do enough. Maybe we shall see. Uh, there is another bit I need to do, which I might do now because it's it's one of the things that I put to one side but never got round to doing, and that was these end pieces here, they're on the top of the shocks. Those in there at the moment is the hardware, the stainless steel hardware that goes through, but they're not long enough. I need longer ones because the, the screws, the bolts are just not on. The, the, the thread isn't sort of grabbing the screw. So they're probably, but they will come undone. So what I'm gonna do, let me find, I know I've got them somewhere, some long studs to go through and then we will replace them because you know, if I don't do it now, I probably will never do it. So I've got a couple of um, crosshead screws. I think they might even be 
the original ones that came off of another Kyosho. I'm hoping the thread is the same. So we'll, uh, they're also, they're, I think the heads are slightly bigger. So I'm hoping they don't, they do go in, not, not squash up against, they sort of look like a, the head should go in to the, the sort of the mount inside like a recess. When I put these up against it, they do look a bit big, but anyway, let me, um, let's get these off a minute. So that's like that. And will that go on to there? Held in somehow. I mean, it is on there. So let me do the other one. I won't film that one. And I'll be back. The, the ones that were off maybe off another Koyo show anyway so so there you have it that concludes uh, part seven um i fitted the the front pins there for the top of the bulkhead and the top shock mounts so they're slightly longer but they go on there fine i've put an extra spacer in here a little bit just to sort of space them out for a fraction uh the pipes are all on the, the fuel line, sorry. Um, we're still undecided about the efficiency of the sealer there. Mm, I think I know the answer, but here's hoping. I've also eyed the track. So I haven't actually done the track, but I've eyeballed it up. So I lengthened the, you know, the track control arms accordingly. It is on there now. Um, I've adjusted the ride height slightly. I think the back needs a little bit of work still, or the front slightly lower. Either or doesn't really matter. But it all it all tends to work as as expected. Uh, that's the front. I don't know if you can see the back, but it's a bit stiffer at the back. It is bit. It does run a bit stiffer. There's more weight. Clearly, there's got to be more weight added to it, i.e., the electrics, which leads me on to part eight. So, in the next part, it's going to have to buy some bits. Um, it's going to need servos. Uh, I can use a receiver out of another car, but it will need a receiver and a switch. And I've got a, a power pack. And I think it will be a case of just getting it up, up putting all the linkage on, because it's obviously the throttle linkage and everything like that needs to be adjusted and put on, which will be a pain. But we need to get it all electriced. Um so that the steering works and the throttle works and then we can then do a fire up and then once we've done that that will be part eight electrics and or it might be electrics and then a fire up in part nine depending on the um, time and the uh, that fuel tank and then a bit of a spray and a fitment of the body shell and then a running video um yeah the body shell and the fitment will be a separate video to a running video but yeah probably about 10 parts to this series what do you think oh, i've got to glue the tires on um like i say i'm not a huge fan of the blue tires my mistake i didn't realize they were blue but i have a plan i think the color scheme that i'm choosing might compliment them reasonably well but it doesn't hide from the fact that i don't particularly like blue tires so i think at the moment we have got a bit of a leaky center diff that's going to need sorting out that's one of the worst jobs to do on this car um yeah i mean the the, the header is away from the back there there is space between the header and the shock now. There wasn't before. I have trimmed it. Um, yeah, so we're getting there slowly but surely. Let me know your thoughts. And I shall see you for part... I keep forgetting. Part 8. This is part 7. I'll see you for part 8 for the installation. And obviously I've got to buy them yet. Uh, the electronics. So two servos maybe a receiver if if i feel i need to i might do um 
and then we'll go from there. Hope you enjoyed the video. It's coming along quite nicely. Um, buns. Oh, or homegrown strawberries. They're nice, they are. We digress, but here we go. Camera's going flat. I've got to go to work. I will see you on the next video. Uh, bye for now.